If you want to escape from reality, same. <laughs> These books will hopefully transport you to a different dimension, to a different time and place, to a different reality. You will forget about your problems. Let's get started without any introductions. <laughs> okay, I actually have to step in and say that my camera decided not to focus on me and instead it focused on the background, which it's understandable because, you know, there's Queen Taeyeon right there and I'd rather look at her face as well, to be honest. Yeah, I'm really sorry. It's kind of blurry the whole time. <laughs> C'est la vie. So first up, I'm gonna start off with a bang. Okay, I'm starting off with a somewhat controversial book. It's not controversial, it's just... There's very divided opinions on this. People seem to either love it or hate it. So there's no in between. This is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Maas. When I read this, I hadn't read anything else by her. So I didn't have anything else to compare it with. So I didn't really know what to expect going into it. I have since read A Court of Thorns and Roses. <laughs> I think it's overhyped, but whatever. I really fucking love this. I feel like and this might be true for many people that love Sarah J Maas, like, it's more about the entertainment than anything else. Like, you're not going into this thinking it's gonna be a masterpiece, you know? But, if you want to have some fun... <laughs> this follows Bryce... Oh fuck, how do you explain this book? Okay, it follows Bryce who's half fey, half human, and... Okay, I clearly struggled to explain the synopsis of the book. <laughs> So I'm just gonna do it now. Her best friend and her pack of wolves all get killed by someone or something. And then a few days later, two other people also get killed. And she has some sort of connection to all of them. And because of that, she's asked to kind of help along with the investigation because they think it's someone that she might possibly know or something like that. So basically she's tasked to work with the angels who I guess they're like the FBI, <laughs> I don't know. And they're investigating it and she works along with them to kind of find out who's behind all of these attacks. At the same time, she's also tasked to find this missing horn that might be involved in all of this. Anyway, back to past me, I guess. So most of the book is very much about her and Hunt, who's the love interest. It's about them just kind of playing detective, you know, playing Scooby-Doo, <laughs> just going around the city looking for some hints and it's a fun time if you're trying to forget about your own life and your own problems like this is the book for you but holy shit okay when i started reading this book i was literally hooked from the beginning it was so good i could not put it down and i was not expecting that at all i thought i was gonna just find it entertaining but in a like trashy sort of way like you know it was fun but it's trash i love it <laughs> i feel kind of embarrassed but no, there's no shame here. It doesn't matter. I don't care what people say. I did like it. So, How's the Birth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. The next book I want to talk about, okay, it's actually not a book. I want to talk about a manga series. No. <laughs> Hear me out. If you're not someone who likes mangas, what's your problem? <laughs> no, but seriously, give this one a shot. Okay, I'm talking about Yona of the Dawn. <sighs> Recently, Hannah from A Clockwork Reader started talking about it and literally I freaked out the moment I saw her talk about it because I was like, finally, someone talk about this, please. Like, I found out about this in, I want to say November, just because I randomly watched the anime and I think the same thing happened to her as well, where she watched the anime and then like, you literally cannot get enough. Like, you can't get enough. I tend to only watch animes without reading the mangas. Like, I do like reading mangas, but, you know, like, I'd rather watch an anime if there's an anime. And literally it was so good that like I had to pick up the manga volumes. I could not not know what was gonna happen next. So I think if you're gonna watch the anime, first off, do it. <laughs> do it. There's only 25 episodes and I'm upset. <laughs> like the fact that it's so underrated is a crime. But yeah, like the manga is so good. The story, oof. okay, first off, in case you don't know anything about it, it's a historical fantasy romance series and basically the plot follows the history of Korea, Japan and China and you can kind of see that actually when you're reading the story like I didn't know that going into it but then once the plot unfolds you're like oh that seems oddly familiar so it's definitely changed a bit so it's not like you know it's fiction at the end of the day but it's definitely inspired by 
that. And on top of that, you obviously have some fantastical elements. I mean, there's dragons involved, so, you know. Not actual dragons, though. It's more like dragon people. Anyway, so the story follows Yona, who is the princess of Kyoka. I think that's what it's called. A coup happens, and her dad gets killed. <laughs> So she ends up having to run away from the castle, otherwise she was also gonna get murdered. So the journey begins from there. She wants to learn more about her country because she's always only ever lived in the castle. And she, she obviously lived a very priv privileged... Pri privileged? Privileged life. Uh, but basically, Yona, she obviously really looked after her dad. However, she also understands and realizes that things aren't that easy and simple and she needs to understand why the people like didn't see him as a leader they did not respect him and she wants to be able to understand her people so that one day she can go back to the palace and become a queen who can actually rule over her country knowing what the people have gone through she starts off being this very shallow superficial girl who just cares about you know the boy she loves and whatnot which <laughs> by the way there's incest i guess not really but you know at that time it was normal to be interested in your cousin so just just know that okay so editing me is back because i never finished that sentence but basically what i was trying to say is that she starts off by being more of a shallow girl uh, not really knowing much about her country's suffering and then as the story unfolds she grows so much as a person all of the characters do in general the character growth is just so well done and i love the characters because of that and i think that's part of the reason why the characters are so strong and why they're so likable, especially Yona. And she doesn't just start off by knowing uh, the difference between right and wrong and all of that. Like she learns it along the way. There's so many incredible tropes. Like you can't understand. <laughs> First off, found family. Mm, when I tell you, it's the best, the best found family I've ever seen, I've ever read about, I've ever watched. Like truly so fucking good the character growth is so fucking incredible and when you look at also like the way that they all just become closer and the way they become like truly like a family it's just insane it's so good it's so fucking good so yeah found family trope number one trope number two slow burn romance bitch need i say more no <laughs> like this is truly so fucking slow you're gonna be like Where's the romance? Usually I would be that bitch, but I was so hooked with the plot that I literally didn't even care. I literally was like, you know what? It's okay because the plot is so fucking good and the characters are so great that I can overlook that. And even now, like, it's not super... They're not official yet, so, you know, buckle in for the ride. It's worth it. It's also a childhood best friends to lovers, which, let me say it right now, I genuinely think... It's better than enemies to lovers, and you can fucking sue me. You can, you can at me. We can fight about it. I'm telling you, it's so much fucking better. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough, it's also a bodyguard romance. It's a bodyguard and the princess, so mm, you know it's good. Also, shout out to Huck. He's the bodyguard, and he's the fucking best. I love him so much. When I tell you, there were so many moments where I literally was just like, what a man. I wish. There were more hacks in the world, to be honest. And also Yona, just like, oh, she's such a badass. Okay, next up, I want to talk about an author. I actually have two recommendations from this author, although I would probably recommend all of their works, but I haven't read all of them. So anyway, I'm talking about Eve Babbitts. It's so weird because I feel like I've heard everybody talk about her, and at the same time, I feel like no one is talking about her. I don't. Is that weird? I don't know. These are the two books that I've read. Slow Days, Fast Company, and Black Swans. First off, <laughs> look, I am someone who doesn't care about LA. I don't care about Hollywood. However, her writing is so fucking good and so immersive. When you're reading her books, it literally feels like you've lived in LA your whole life, even though these are set in like the 60s, 70s, 80s, and I wasn't even alive yet. <laughs> I wasn't even born yet. I have never been to LA in my life. It's crazy. And here's why, because she's not the kind of author that will have paragraphs and paragraphs of descriptions about, you know, how the, the places look like and whatnot, like literally there's none of that. 
and yet she manages to create this vivid imagery to the point where like I genuinely felt like I was there. Her writing seems so casual but yet it's so witty. You can feel how charismatic she is and how interesting of a person she is. Like you can really see it through her writing. Out of the two I don't really know which one I would recommend. I gave both of these five stars. I love them. Um, these are both the kinds of books that you just want to read in one sitting. Like, at least for me, I could not put them down. I sat down in this chair and I was like, I'm not moving from here until I'm done. You're literally brought to LA in the in that time period and you're just reading about the protagonist who... Basically, it's Eve Babbitt, but it's like fictionalized. Uh, and she's just like going to parties. She's talking about her friendships, her experience with relationships and whatnot. It, she's such an icon. Well, it was. Unfortunately, she passed away, I think in December of last year, so literally like not that long ago. It was really sad. I think her, both her and Joan Didion like passed away like around the same time and they were contemporaries. Like they were both writing about LA at the same time, in the same place, obviously. <laughs> anyway, I highly, highly, highly recommend these. I'm just so excited to read all of her books, to be honest, but I think, you know, you can't go wrong with these two. I feel like these are the most popular ones. Um, and personally, I can see why I love them so much. So much. Next up, I want to talk about this cutie. This is House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. <laughs> I think that's how you say her name. Not gonna lie, I read this because I love the movie so fucking much. Like, that's one of my all time favorite movies. I rewatched that many times throughout the year. Like, I can't not watch it, it's my comfort movie. Or one of many. If you've watched the movie, then you're gonna love this, regardless of the story itself, I think. Because it, the, the story is definitely different, like, from the movie. It's it's a product of its time. <laughs> like, when I was reading this, I didn't even know when it was written, but, like, as I was reading it, I was literally like, was this written in the 80s? Because it really gave me 80s vibes, and I was right. <laughs> and you can tell. However, it is super cute and wholesome and fun and just magical and I think again like if you've watched the movie before like if you if you love the movie you're probably gonna love this just because of the movie to be honest because like that's literally the only reason why <laughs> I love it um, but also it's so fun because you read more about Sophie and her family and also you learn more about Hal and there's a whole aspect of Hal's life that is not included in the movie at all and I'm glad because honestly what the fuck was that but also <laughs> it was kind of fun learning more about him I do have the sequels I have not read them yet I will read them eventually but I highly recommend picking this one up for sure and yeah there's nothing else to say about it honestly it's just fun and lighthearted like if you want a good time and you just want to like really put your life on pause just kind of go into fantasy land in a cute <laughs> Um, this is, I guess, middle grade slash YA, um, so, you know, it's just really simple, like, simple not in a bad way, like, it's just, it's just cute. So I forgot to mention what the book is about, but basically this follows Sophie, who took over her dad's hat shop after he passed away, and she did that to ensure that her sisters would kind of follow their own dreams, I guess, and she's kind of, like, destined for these, like, dull life or at least in her opinion she thinks she's not really gonna amount to much and like she doesn't care but yeah she doesn't really think her life is gonna be exciting in any way but unfortunately she encounters uh, the witch of the waste who out of pettiness I guess uh, kind of curses her and she becomes an old lady after she becomes an old lady she decides to leave home to kind of you know find a way to get back to normal uh, and to un undo the, the curse. So on her journey, she actually ends up in Howl's moving castle. Howl is a very well-known magician, but he's got kind of this bad reputation, a heartbreaker, a playboy, you know. She ends up joining him as well as his assistant or slash apprentice and Calcifer, the fire demon. She ends up joining them. They become this like cute little family, I guess. But basically, yeah, she kind of becomes his maid and then they slowly fall in love. It's just a very calm sort of book uh, and a calm sort of adventure. Because this was written in the 80s at the time, if when the audience was labeled YA, so young adult, it was more like younger young adults. So in that sense, it's not like other 
why fantasy novels from recent years but it's still really good but yeah the book is it's got the same studio ghibli studio ghibli vibes so it's really calm and i think sometimes you might be in the mood to read something that requires less <laughs> brain function you know obviously adult fantasy or contemporary whatever like it can be really fun to read but sometimes you just you need to take a break from everything and i think uh, because this kind of reads like middle grade it's just a very fun time it's a fast read and it's got these really cute vibes really wholesome again because it's a product of its time like it feels kind of quirky almost like it's very 80s in like this almost cringy way but like in a good way at the same time i don't know anyway <laughs> it, it's good in general if you want to read a book that's not gonna be super stressful in any kind of way then this is it next up on you know with similar vibes to house Moving castle this is a comic book and it's hooky by miriam bonastre tour and this was actually originally a webtoon so you can actually read this for free as well you don't have to buy a physical copy but webtoon is a little shit <laughs> right now uh it started changing like the way the app works so basically this has been completed like i think it, it completed in 2020 and you used to be able to just read all of it. You could literally binge read it. But now they added this thing that it's like the daily pass. So you have to wait every day to be able to read. With this one, it's two episodes. So you won't be able to like really binge read it, which I think it's really a shame because I feel like this is the kind of story that like you want to binge read it. You know, you want to be transported into this world. You want to just read about the twins. But yeah, this follows Danny and Dorian. Um, they're witches. It's really cool because there's a twist on the whole like witch trope where basically you know we're used to seeing the witch as the antagonist and you know they're the scary ones. In this one it's the opposite so you have the witches that witches and humans live together but basically the witches used to be the ones kind of in control you know on top of the food chain However, the humans then started, you know, <laughs> kidnapping witches and putting them at the stake. So, basically what happened is that a lot of the witches ended up going into hiding and just staying away from humans altogether. The story begins with them leaving home to go to this, like, wizard school. But basically, they miss the bus, so they end up just flying to another town. And I don't... I can't remember why, but basically they fly to this small town where there's a wizard and they ask him to if they can become their his apprentice. His apprentices. That's where they meet the gang. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. See, at first they're really scared of humans because they don't know what to expect. They were raised by parents that like, you know, told them that like be wary of humans and all that and we find out why later on. But then once they go to this town and they start meeting people, they realize actually humans aren't that bad. What I love about this story is that even though at first at least it reads kind of like middle grade but then as it progresses it's more like YA I guess. Uh, either way it's a cute fun time. It doesn't shy away from showing like the nuance of you know that is humanity that are human beings. Like we can both be the good and the bad guys <laughs> at the same time and she really shows that throughout the story. Uh, you also have the characters kind of like, going through their own in in inner turmoil and kind of you know, growing up and trying to understand like who is the bad guy then because like obviously you have them being witches and then being surrounded by humans and understanding that humans can be good but at the same time as their journey progresses they also learn more about what happened during like this it wasn't a war but you know during this rebellion i guess um and they see what happened to like what they did to some of the witches overall it is such a lovely story um but it also dwells with more difficult topics like mental health, intergenerational trauma, etc. I highly recommend it. You could just get the physical copy as well. However, let it be known, <laughs> it's not completed. And I don't really know what's gonna happen with this because it doesn't say one, like it doesn't say volume one anywhere. So I don't know if they are gonna come out with more uh, or if this was maybe like a trial run and like, you know, they wanted to see if it was gonna sell and then like 
eventually they might come out with a sequel. I have just now found out that there is actually a sequel coming out, so all is good in the world. <laughs> but yeah, technically I've already read it on Webtoon, so that's where I first found out about it, and then I think last year, like, that's when they published it for the first time. And again, you definitely can get hooked with this and, like, you will... Hooked. Hooky. Anyway. If you can binge read it, you know, or whether you buy this or you, you get coins on Webtoon, I would highly recommend doing that just because you get really transported into this... this fantasy land and honestly, it's just great. Also, there's a romance involved, there's, you know, it, there's LGBTQ representation, um, there's diversity, it's just... It's so cute. It's so... Oh, it's so wholesome. Side note, the author is Spanish, if I'm not mistaken, so this would be a translated work as well. Since I'm talking about webtoons, I might as well move on to another webtoon. <sighs> I'm not ready for this. <laughs> okay. This is the best webtoon I've ever read. No offense. I, I love you. When I tell you I haven't been this obsessed with anything in so long, probably since Yona of the Dawn, honestly. Oh, like, I can't, I can't. Whale Star, the Young Sung Mermaid. <sighs> I could cry. I love it so fucking much. Talk about an obsession. Like, truly, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, if you want to escape your life, if you want to escape reality, read it. I have never bought coins on Webtoon before in my life. Literally, I I had to. I had to buy them. I had to read the whole thing. I stayed up until 4 a.m. to finish it. I could not. I could not stop. I could not stop. It was so fucking good. It's the best Webtoon I've ever read, like, hands down. And I need, I need a physical copy so bad. And they actually have a Korean one, so if you speak Korean, lucky you because i need it so fucking bad like i need them to print the english version the english translation like yesterday i need it yesterday if you want to know what it's about which why wouldn't you <laughs> it's a retelling of the little mermaid and honestly i'm not the biggest like little mermaid fan however this is set in joseon era so like korea but like joseon period time period um, specifically in like 20s, 30s. It's basically about that time period, so Korea at the time was ruled over by the Japanese. We follow the story of Sua, who she's supposed to be the Little Mermaid, and she basically finds and rescues this man who he was fighting for the liberation of Korea, of Joseon. He was running away from the police because he tried to set off a bomb in a Japanese building. The plan fails and him and his compatriot, they get separated. He ends up in the ocean, almost drowns, and she ends up finding him, so she goes to rescue him, and then she takes care of him and everything. There's a turn of events and she ends up losing her voice because of a murder attempt. <laughs> it's really sad, I don't, know, I don't know why I'm smiling. I'm not morbid, I swear, it's just that I smile whenever I talk about death, don't ask me why. Fast forward, like a couple of years maybe, and she ends up leaving her her small town in order to go and find the person who did that to her, who tried to kill her. And that's where the story unfolds and it's just, oh, it's so fucking heartbreaking. Like if you're thinking, oh, it's a retelling of the Little Mermaid, it's gonna be a happy ending. Nah, nah, homie. Like, this is not a retelling of the Disney Little Mermaid, this is a retelling of the original story, so you know it's heartbreaking, like you're gonna be crying. The amount of times that I cried reading this, it's ah, uh, it's insane, but honestly so worth it. I have no regrets, not even a single letter, it was so fucking good. I also laughed so much, like it's just funny, it's so cute, you love the characters. Again, there's so much character growth and it's just beautiful seeing them grow. I mean, sometimes it's painful and sad because reality you have some characters that start out a bit more doe-eyed, if you will, and end up being a bit more cynical um, because of life circumstances, and then you have the opposite as well, where you have characters becoming more soft-hearted, I guess. And... Oh, oh, I can't. It's so good. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. It's so fucking good. Like, I need a physical copy of that. Oh my god. So many feels. 
honestly, if I haven't convinced you, like, you really, you really need to pick that up. Like, it doesn't matter what I'm saying. Even if everything I said right now doesn't sound like something you would like, pick it up anyway. It's free. It's free. It's on Webtoon. But also something else I want to talk about is the the characters. Some of them are super, like, morally grey. Because sometimes you're really like, I hate you so much. And then other times you're like, I fucking love you. So... Yeah, it's a wild ride, honestly. I'm telling you, like, by the end, you're gonna love all the characters. And even the ones that are awful, they're so well done that, like, you just appreciate the craft. This is so fucking good. Like, I can't. I can't. I'm speechless. Like, this is the best. Anyway, since we're on the topic of Korea, let me go ahead and talk about the next book, which is also set in Korea. And this is... Oh, I just hit myself. This is Gumiho, or, well, actually... Wicked Fox by Kat Cho and I read this a couple of years ago, I think it was 2020 um, and I also have the sequel and read the sequel and loved it as well again, like if you want to be transported which I mean this is why you're here, right? like, hello if you don't like why urban fantasies I get it because I wouldn't either, like normally I wouldn't read it however, <laughs> this is an exception because if you like K-dramas You're welcome. Basically, when you're reading this, it literally feels like you're watching a K-drama. And it's so good. It's so good. And it's a fast read as well. The chapters aren't super long. And, like, sometimes you'll get these... I think some of them are made up and some of them are real. But, like, these facts about, like, the gumiho. Or... I don't know if that's how you say it. I'm sorry. Or just in general, like, about some of the Korean fairy tales and fables. And it's just so fun. And it, it's so good. Also, the characters are just amazing. It's just really interesting. It shows you a different culture. It shows you Korean culture, which is fun as well, you know. It's just really good. I feel like this is just a fun time. It's a good time. I reread it again a couple of weeks ago and I still gave it five stars. I loved it so much. Like, so good. But yeah. Oh, I didn't even tell you what it's about. It follows Mi Young and... What's his name again? Ji Hoon. So, Mi Young and Ji Hoon. Uh, basically, she's a nine-tailed fox. So, a Gumiho is a nine-tailed fox. And he ends up seeing her transform one night. She's transferred to his same school and that's when they meet again. He basically tries to become her friend and she's kind of like she's very much like a... It's not like she's cold-hearted by any means. It's just that because of her lifestyle, she's always kind of kept away from other people. Um, but obviously this time around it kind of changes and basically shit unfolds from there. You can't talk about it without spoiling it. But it's just really fun and... Yeah, again, if you like K-dramas, this is for you. If you like Korean folklore, this is also for you. It's just great. It's an urban fantasy. It's beautiful. The sequel is also just as good, in my opinion. Next. Okay, this is one of my favorite series of all time. And this is actually really well-loved on BookTube and BookTok as well. So I think most people would have probably already read this. But <laughs> The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is a classic at this point. The series... Oh, it's so fucking good. Again, I picked this up two years ago and I really didn't know what to expect because prior to watching booktube I was never really into fantasy, which is ironic because I feel like I'm talking about several fantasy books right now But I picked this up years ago 2020 and literally I loved it so much that I ended up reading like all three books Pretty much like within the same month I don't think anybody needs me to explain what this is about, but just in case you do, we're following a human protagonist who lives in the Fey world and she just wants to fit in, but it's basically impossible for a human. The best next thing that she can do is to kind of so is to try and become a knight, I think, or something like that, like a a soldier, a general. But things are not that easy, and just you know, shit unfolds. It's really it's really fun. Um, the plot is so interesting in my opinion, like, it's just really interesting, I liked it, I thought it was so well done, I love Jude, she's such a badass, honestly, I don't understand people that say they don't like her, cause like, what's there not to like? <laughs> but yeah, I fucking loved it, I reread them all again last year, and I'm definitely gonna reread them this year again, because they're so good, and they're so fun, and like truly, if you want to escape reality again i know i said it for every single book and that's the whole point of this video but like truly this one will do it next up this is all vibes <laughs> the night circus by erin morgenstern Oof. i'm back will this ever stop 
Probably not. So I'm back for hopefully the last time to explain the synopsis of The Night Circus because once again, I forgot to mention what it's about. <laughs> Clearly, I have a problem when it comes to explaining what a book is about. Like, I genuinely, I feel like I either go too much into detail to the point where I'm literally spoiling everything or I literally don't say anything at all. I genuinely don't know how to explain The Night Circus, to be honest. It's a very specific concept and very unique concept. It follows this woman and this man, um, I forgot their names, sorry. But it follows them as they grow up being told by their respective guardians, I guess, um, the girl's father and the, the boy, like, he's adopted. So when they're really young, they're told by their guardians that they're gonna compete against each other. Like, so basically, both of these people have magic powers and their respective guardians have been in a sort of competition with each other for many, many years where they will raise someone from a young age or like, yeah, I think they will basically take someone as their apprentice and teach them about magic and basically help them improve their magic abilities and yeah, all of that. That way, once they're older, they will meet up to have this duel, I guess, uh, or many duels, uh, where basically they're testing out each other's magic abilities. They have to compete with each other and they have to see who the winner is. The winner of the duel basically means that the person who raised them, that you know, that taught them, they are the winner. So basically the guardians are using these young people <laughs> Uh, to their own advantage to kind of show off their abilities as professors or, you know, just their teaching skills when it comes to magic, I guess. Anyway, we are following these two specific characters and one of them, like I said, she's the daughter of this very well-known famous magician. Um, except, of course, the world doesn't know that he's actually a magician. They think he's, you know, putting on a show. And then the other guy, like I said, he's adopted by this other... Uh, I think he's another well-known figure, but I can remember, but he's also got magical powers and everything, clearly. They both get taught how to hone their skills when it comes to their magic, and then once they reach a certain age, they both become part of this night circus in, some, in different ways, and basically that's how they compete. They will create these beautiful shows within the circus, and that's how they're competing against each other. They are bound to duel with each other, um, they are bound to duel until someone wins, uh, so it's kind of like a curse, so they can really choose not to compete uh, and eventually, you know, a little romance unfolds and they kind of realize they don't really want to compete and yeah, I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's so magical and beautiful. Ah, oh, I just, I love it so much. I highly recommend reading it on audiobook to be honest, because truly it's so magical, like you feel so immersed she will come up with these crazy settings and like the way she explains it, it's so well done that you will literally see it right there, like like as if it was in front of you. The imagery is so vivid, I fucking love it. I read it, it's really funny because I was in a really bad mood, like I was so exhausted, I was traveling by train and it was like an 8 hour train ride and I was studying as well and it was just, it was the worst. So at one point I felt super sick. And like I just couldn't study anymore so I started listening to the audiobook and then I was hooked. I was transported to this world and honestly again like I was literally feeling like physically sick and yet I still managed to get out of my head and like got lost in it. 10 out of 10 recommend. Like truly if you're going through a hard time the night circus will do the trick. And same with the book that I'm about to talk about actually because I got COVID last week uh, I'm still kind of recovering, but basically the other day uh, I couldn't read physically, like I was feeling super lightheaded, I felt super weak and tired, my eyes hurt, like it was just painful. So I ended up listening to an audiobook. I finally read a book that I've been wanting to read for a while, which is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I think this is marketed as a enemies to lovers book. And literally the protagonist calls the main guy her nemesis. But like, bitch, what are you talking about? <laughs> nemesis where? Like, you guys barely talk to each other, they're acquaintances, and yet she's literally like, oh, he's my nemesis. Like, okay, anyway. The reason why they hate each other is that they both make assumptions about the other. It's as a result of misunderstandings. And honestly, I think that's realistic. Like, I think that's definitely something that could happen. But still, it was just so funny, like, reading about that, I was like, 
really. Anyway, I, I loved it, by the way. I gave it five stars, which is actually very unlikely for me because I tend to not super enjoy contemporary romance. I don't know why. Like, there's something about it that always kind of, like, just... Mm. Like, I like them, but most of the time it's, like, a four stars, where, where it's, like, I enjoyed it, but it didn't really hit the spot, you know? This one did, because the story is really good, and I think that, again, like, all the misunderstandings, they make sense. Like, they're very realistic, it makes sense. The third act fight, you know, the third act breakup or whatever, I felt that. I don't know, it was just nice to see that unfold and be resolved. It was really good. And again, like I said, I was... <laughs> I was suffering, okay? I was I was going through it. No, I'm just kidding. I had really mild symptoms, so I don't even want to pretend that, like I was going through a really rough time. But still, you know, uh, COVID isn't fun. And it definitely, it definitely helped. It definitely took me out of my own misery. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. I didn't even say what the story is about. So the story follows... Why do I remember her sister's name, but I don't remember the protagonist's name? Oopsie. Basically, it follows her, <laughs> the main protagonist, and her twin sister gets married, uh, but unfortunately, everybody gets sick uh, because of food poisoning, except for the protagonist and the love interest, who's also the groom's brother. So they both end up going on the honeymoon that was supposed to be, you know, for the married couple. So they go together, even though they're... <laughs> nemesis on this trip they get to know each other a bit more so they come together a romance in unfolds you know it's a romance book it's fun i highly recommend it next up i don't have much to say but anne of green gables by ellen montgomery i think everybody knows what anne of green gables is about i think this is just a fun time it's really cute it's very wholesome if you're going through it <laughs> if you just don't want to think about life right now like i think this would be a really good read where you just you know you, you follow silly anne i love her so much i honestly identify so much with her i genuinely think she's an infp if you think otherwise do not tell me i don't want to know so i know this is the only one of the series that i've read i kind of want to continue with the series but there's too many books either way this is a fun one. And then my final recommendations. These are a bit different from the others because these are horror recommendations and they're actually both from the same author. And it's Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez as well as The Dangers of Smoking in Bed, also by her. And both of these are so good. I will say, personally, I prefer Things We Lost in the Fire. I think it was just... It was just better. I don't know. I read this two years ago. And like the f the short story, the first story from the collection is literally like my favorite and I still think about it to this day. Like the vibes were incredible and I feel like that's true for all of her short stories. Like the vibes are off the charts incredible. Uh, I will say this one just felt, I don't know, like there was something off about it. Like there, I was just, I didn't feel the same vibes that I did from this one. Uh, and I've heard other people that have read both also say the same thing so... I would say if you don't if you haven't read either I would say go for this one but I, I still do recommend this one as well so these are short story collections horror uh, Latin American 10 out of 10 recommend because of the writing style she really grabs you by the throat like she holds your attention you're in the story it doesn't matter that they're short stories like you will feel as though you're there and you're present in that story and again vivid imagery it's just I love those vibes. Like, I love the vibes of these books. Like, truly so good. And the horror elements as well. Just, mm, chef's kiss. And that's it for my recommendations. I hope you can escape your <laughs> reality if that's what you want to do. Uh, no, but I hope that you really get hooked on these books because honestly, mm, they're so good. I really hope you're gonna pick up the webtoon that I recommended. <laughs> Whale Star. Legit, I can't stop thinking about it. Like, it's been days since I read it and like, I still, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. It's so good. Anyway, I hope you picked these up. You know, let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know your thoughts on them. Peace.